Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here today. Thank you to our witnesses. Uh, thank you for all that you do to help keep Americans healthy, safe, and well. I'm sorry that Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, Dawn O'Connell, cannot be with us today to share her expertise and want to express my sympathies to, for the southern sudden death in her family and her loss. I appreciate, though, that she did submit testimony and has agreed to respond to written questions. Well, all Americans are relieved that we are emerging from the worst pandemic in our lifetimes. Over one million American lives lost. Examining the response to COVID-19 will help us prepare for the next public health emergency. But if we take ourselves back to those early days of the pandemic, I remember very well, the public was scared, they were uncertain, but public health experts in government and across the country mobilized to better understand the virus, to develop vaccines and treatments, and try to provide us with the answers in the face of great uncertainty. They worked to follow the science and improve guidance as we learned new information about the virus and how to contain it. And they were trying their hardest to save lives in the face of a new threat. The tone from the top, however, was very different. In the earliest, most critical days of the COVID-19 pandemic, then President Trump downplayed the threat, saying it was one person coming in from China, and we have it under control, and it's going to go away. He improvised from the White House briefing, brief, briefing room about potential treatments completely unsupported by science and sometimes dangerous. Hydroxychloroquine, bleach, ultraviolet light. He repeatedly undercut the hard work of public health officials who were up against one of the greatest threats to our country in modern times. Despite this, the Republican majority now somehow claims that the Biden administration is to blame for reduced confidence in public health institutions. Over the past two years, Republicans have repeatedly chosen to cast blame on the Biden administration and career public servants to deflect from their leaders' early failures to contain the pandemic. And some have actively spread misinformation and tried to hide vital public health data. At last week's hearing, I stated that I was hopeful that we could avoid in this committee the kind of partisan attacks on public servants that we have seen taking root in other committees across the House, and instead focus constructively on how to strengthen our public health infrastructure for the future. Unfortunately, just one day after last week's hearing, this committee sent a letter to NIH requesting a huge number of documents and transcribed interviews of career staffers while implying that the agency is hiding information about the origins of COVID-19. Democrats, however, remain focused on how to restore and maintain trust in the world's top health institutions represented here today. Give them the tools and the resources they need to keep Americans safe and ensure that the public has the best information based on solid science to make decisions. Combating the virus is an enormous challenge. It continues to mutate, and our response and strategies must evolve with it. But what will remain constant is my firm support for strong public health institutions which have saved countless lives. I'm, in, I'm immensely grateful for the witnesses' leadership. I look forward to, to hearing how you plan on incorporating the lessons learned from COVID-19 to further strengthen your agencies and these important missions for the future. I yield back my time.